Hello and welcome back. My name is William and today we're talking about finding minimum spanning trees with Prim's algorithm. In the previous video on Prim's, we discussed MST basics and the lazy implementation of Prim's. This video builds off concepts explained there, so please watch that video before this one. There should be a link in the description. The lazy implementation of prims inserts E edges into a priority queue. This results in each poll operation on the priority queue to be big O of log E. In the eager version, we maintain the idea that instead of adding edges to the priority queue, which can later become stale, that instead we should track node edge key value pairs that can easily be updated and polled to determine the next best edge we should add to the minimum spanning tree. For this all to make sense, there's a key realization that needs to happen. And that is for any MST with directed edges, each node is paired with exactly one of its incoming edges. That is, except for the start node. One way to see this is on a minimum spanning tree with multiple edges leaving a node, but only ever one edge entering a node. Let's have a closer look at what I mean. Suppose we have this undirected graph. The equivalent directed version of this graph looks like this. A possible minimum spanning tree starting at node 0 might be the following, highlighted in green. Now, notice that on this directed MST, each node is paired with exactly one edge, except for the starting node. So in a sense, there seems to be a relationship we can take advantage of here which is that each node is paired with exactly one incoming edge. In the eager version, we are trying to determine which of a node's incoming edges we should select to include in the MST. The main difference coming from the lazy version is that instead of adding edges to a priority queue as we iterate over the edges of a node, we're going to relax, that is to update, the destination node's most promising incoming edge. So you might be asking yourself the question, how are we going to efficiently update and retrieve these node edge pairs? Well, one solution is to use an index priority queue, or simply IPQ for short, which can efficiently update and poll key value pairs. You can think of an IPQ as the data structure you would get if a hash table and a priority queue had a baby together. It supports sorted key value pair updates and pull operations in logarithmic time. Using this new approach would reduce the overall time complexity from big O of E log E to big O of E log V, since there can only be V node edge pairs in the IPQ. If you're interested in learning more about the index priority queue data structure and how it's implemented, I would highly recommend my data structures video on the subject. I will link it in the description below if you need to catch up. The implementation for the eager version is slightly different and the algorithm goes as follows. Maintain an IPQ of size V that sorts vertex edge pairs V E based on minimum edge cost of E. Start the algorithm on any node S, mark S as visited and relax all the edges of S. Relaxing in this context refers to updating the entry for node V in the IPQ from V old edge to V new edge, if the new edge has a better cost than the old edge. Then, while the index priority queue is not empty, and a minimum spanning tree has not been formed, DQ the next best vertex edge pair VE from the IPQ, mark node V as visited and add edge E to the MST. Lastly, relax all edges of V while making sure not to relax any edge pointing to a node which has already been visited. All right, I think it's time to see an example Suppose we have the following weighted undirected graph and we want to find any minimum spending tree. 
One thing to remember is that while we're dealing with an undirected graph, we will be internally representing it as a directed graph, where each undirected edge is stored as two directed edges. I will be keeping track of all node edge key value pairs on the right and update them accordingly as the algorithm executes. So you can think of the red box as the contents of the index priority queue. Let's begin the algorithm on node zero. Start by iterating over all the edges of zero and relax them. During the relaxing process, add a node edge pair to the index priority queue if it does not exist yet. Otherwise, update the value if the new edge has a better cost than what already exists. The first node edge pair we add is node two with the incoming edge from zero to two with a cost of zero and similarly for the rest of zero's edges. The next best node edge pair based on the minimum edge cost is node two with the incoming edge from node zero. Now iterate through all the edges of node two and relax all edges. Care to ignore edges pointing to already visited nodes like the one on this slide. The edge two, five, six has a better cost going to node five than the edge from node zero to node five with a cost of seven. So update the index priority queue with this new edge. I will denote IPQ updates with a purple box around the edge being updated. The next best node edge pair is node three with the edge coming from node zero with a cost of five. Now iterate through all the edges of node three and relax all edges. The edge coming from node three offers a better value. So I update the value for node one in the index priority queue with the new edge. Add a new key value pair entry for node six since node six is not yet inside the index priority queue. Update the value for node five with the new better edge we just found. And from this point on, I will let the animation play Please try and follow along. All right, and that's the algorithm. You can see that the minimum spanning tree we found consists of the edges highlighted in green. If we collapse the graph back into its undirected edge view, it becomes clear which edges are included in the minimum spanning tree. You can also get the MST cost by adding the values of all the edges in the spanning tree for a cost of nine. Let's have a look at some pseudocode for the eager implementation of prims. You'll notice that it's almost identical to the lazy version, except for a few key details, which I will highlight. First is n, which is still the number of nodes in the graph, followed by the variable IPQ, which represents the index priority queue instead of a traditional priority queue, which stores node index edge object pairs. Edge objects are still represented as start node and node edge cost triplets with the node index being an integer. G is once again our graph adjacency list of weighted edges. Remember that in G, every undirected edge is represented as two directed edges. There's also the whole story about whether we should be using an adjacency list or using an adjacency matrix to represent our graph when running prims because we know that this can greatly impact performance. I was curious and did some analysis comparing the adjacency list versus the adjacency matrix, and the results I got were interesting. This dotted line graph shows the performance of using an adjacency list in blue versus an adjacency matrix in green. The x-axis represents the graph edge density percentage, 
and the y-axis indicates performance measured in milliseconds. As you can see, for graphs with fewer edges, the adjacency list outperforms the adjacency matrix. But as the edge density increases, the adjacency matrix becomes the obvious choice. You may be wondering why the adjacency matrix's performance starts to increase after the middle point, where the graph starts to become more and more dense. This is an excellent question, and my guess is that the denser the graph, the fewer relaxation operations need to be performed, which is an expensive part of Prim's algorithm. Since the time to iterate over all the edges of a node is constant, but fewer relaxation operations are needed, performance should increase as a result, but I may be wrong. Even still, the results are interesting and the takeaway is that the graph representation you choose can greatly impact the performance of your algorithm, depending on whether your graph is sparse or dense. All right, back to the pseudocode. The last variable is the visited Boolean array of size n, which tracks whether node i has been visited or not. Now let's have a look at the actual algorithm for eager prims. In the first block, I define a few more variables that we'll need. m, the number of expected edges in the MST, edge count, the number of edges we currently have included in the MST. This variable is used to make sure the tree spans the whole graph. Then is MST cost, which tracks the total cost of our minimum spending tree. And finally, MST edges, which is an array that holds the edges we have included in the MST. After this, I call the relax edges at node method, passing in the start node as an argument. Let's have a look at the relax edges at node method to understand what's happening in there. All right, here we are. You'll notice that this method takes a single argument, which is the current node we care about. The first thing we do is mark the current node as visited so we don't visit it again in the future. Then I reach into our graph adjacency list and get all the edges going outwards from the current node. As we enter the loop and start iterating over all the outgoing edges, the first thing I do inside the loop is grab a reference to the destination node index. This is the node the edge is pointing at. Next, skip edges which point at already visited nodes. Now here's the bit where we actually relax the edge. First, check if the IPQ contains the key with the value of the destination node. If it doesn't, then add the edge to the IPQ for the first time. Otherwise, try and improve the cheapest edge at dest node index with the current edge in the priority queue. Back inside the main method. Next up, keep looping while the IPQ is not empty and we have not yet completed the MST. After extract the next best node index edge object pair from the IPQ based on minimum edge cost. Include the selected edge as part of the MST and sum over the edge costs. Lastly, relax all edges of the current node and repeat until the loop breaks. Outside the main loop, check if we have successfully created a spanning tree. This might not be the case if some of the nodes are unreachable, but assuming that that is not the case, return the MST cost and the edges which make up the spanning tree. And that concludes the pseudocode for Prim's algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. Implementation source code and slides can be found on github.com slash williamfuzet slash algorithms. There should be a link in the description below for those. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science videos. Next video we'll be looking at some source code for eager implementation of prims, so stick around if you want to see more.